for joining us tonight. It's the December 11th uh, meeting of the East Fishfield Town Board. Would you please rise and join me at the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you very much. A um, couple of announcements tonight. We had the tree lighting ceremony last Sunday. Well, actually, before we had the tree lighting ceremony, we had the East Fishfield Historic Society had their open house, so we went there. And that was a really nice, they really do a nice job over there. Then was come over to the tree lighting ceremony over at the community center. And I must say, the place was packed. It was really a nice, uh, nice event. Uh, I'd have to thank a few people who put it on. Number one, the East Fishfield Rotary. There's a lot of work with our tree lighting ceremony. Um, the East Fishfield Community Chorus provide the music. Lori Brangelman and our highway department do the trees out front here and the lighting on the trees out there. And our rec department does a good job. <clears throat> and we went out there and sat with all the kids and everybody lined up and Santa pressed the button. There's like a two minute wait before <laughs> anything happened. And we said, oh no, it's not gonna light up. But thank goodness it did light up, and it was a very nice event, and I just wanted to thank uh, all those people involved, <clears throat> excuse me, and Santa Claus. Uh, excuse me, this has been a long, long week. Joe Panic. last night we had a Joe Panic recognition ceremony at John Jay, and uh, wow, great turnout. Joe Panic is a local youth. Uh, I'm not sure how old he was when he moved up to the town of East Fishkill. He, um, is a real baseball person, started with baseball here. Started, actually started since when he was very small, started baseball and um, played through our leagues, played the local leagues, played in John Jay. And as everybody I'm sure knows, uh, got first round draft by the San Francisco Giants this past uh, couple years ago. And he played and they won this, the uh, World Series this year. So we recognized Joe Panic last night. And I got to tell you, what a nice kid. Just very unassuming, very polite and uh, Really a terrific role model, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, it was a nice event at John Jay. There's, I think it was limited to 500 people. That's all they could, they could put on the bleachers there. But it was very nice and uh, he was just a wonderful kid. I did want to thank a few people who worked on that. <clears throat> Bill Green, who did an outstanding job as the MC. Although I think Bill would really want to be a stand-up comedian, he did a very good job as the MC. Uh, and then there's those of us that organized the event. Bill Green, Jan McHugh, Gina Grippo, Tom O'Hare, Lieutenant Orsino was involved, Bill Beal from the county, and we had the support of the county executive, Mark Molinaro, and John J. Principal, excuse me, Dr. Dwight Bonk. And again, I can't say enough about Joe Panic. What a, what a nice young man. Uh, number three, under announcements. Um, Hillside Lake Stormwater Improvement Grant they call this one a water quality improvement grant. And it's just one of our normal letters. Uh, thank you for submitting your application. Has been reviewed and evaluated. And uh, your project was not selected for funding. So I can't tell you how many of these we've gotten. I think, I think we have, I'd have to take a count. I believe we have probably 12 uh, grant applications out for Hillside Lake and pretty much all of them have been that way, except for one. And that's what I did want to talk a little bit about tonight. Um, we've made several grant applications, I say, over the last probably three years. And in May of 2013, our grant writer, Victor Cornelius, and I were talking, he said, look, why don't you make an application through Congressman Maloney's office? Um, there's gonna be a lot of stormwater sandy funding coming from the federal government. And he said, I think this would be a good way to go. So in 2013, we sent a grant application up to uh, Congressman Maloney's office. And then um, last summer, Congressman Maloney contacted me and he said he wanted me to stop down in his office. And I met with him for about an hour. I met with him, just him, me, and a staffer. And we talked and he asked what were the important things in town of East Fishka, what were the important projects. So I mentioned, obviously, the uh, Hopewell Precision Superfund site, that's a very important project. We need to get water up to that site. And I mentioned Hillside Lake. And I told him about the different grants we had applied for and stuff like that. And we had a nice chat and uh, went on our way. His staffer did stay in touch with me on other issues. 
And then at the end of the summer, I received a call from the congressman and his staffer again. And he said he, was, he, was, he felt somewhat confident that the Stormwater Sandy funding was going to be coming out. And um, he felt one of these grant applications that we had uh, may, may, be, may actually be, have some merit. Um, one thing we did do, what we had done is we'd taken up our grant applications and for the priority funding listing, which was under the congressman's office, um, we combined two grants. It was the stormwater project, the green stormwater uh, innovation project that we'd actually had a, a presentation at the community center a couple years ago and a dam rehab. We're going to rehab the mm -hmm. dam. Some work needs to be done to the dam spillway. So we combined them and submitted them under the um, congressman's through the congressman's office. It totaled about $1.8 million. So at the end of the summer, I received this call from the congressman. They said they felt kind of confident that this thing might be, see some, see some uh, activity. So just wait. So I waited, I waited, I waited. But it was, a, I think it was around October 8th, I got a call, I got an email from New York State Storm Recovery. This is a new group that Governor Cuomo creates this group to disseminate all these funds from Stormwater Sandy. So he, 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 the guy emailed me and said he'd be getting back to me uh, by Friday. And of course, he didn't get back to me by Friday. It was about two more weeks. He finally gets back. And um, he sets up a meeting, so we talk. He sends two people and a, and a gentleman from Congressman Maloney. Now, Congressman Maloney had asked me, he said, look, keep this between us because I'm not really sure this is going to go anywhere. And I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. So we met with the stormwater people, and we had all of our people, the contract engineer, and everybody was there, and we talked about it. And they said, okay, this is what you need to do. So that started. And I can't tell you, every time we turned around, it was more. And um, it, was, it was a huge process. And every time we sent it up to them, they sent us to come back and say, we need more stuff. So, um, and I have to thank a lot of our people, Scott Bryant, Rick Witt, um, really worked hard on John Meskar, our assistant engineer. Um, Jonathan Razor, who helped us do our hazard mitigation plan, um, I called Jonathan up at his firm, and I said, Jonathan, we need documentation on insurance and uh, uh, insurance claims, damages due to flooding in a certain area. We need to prove repetitive claims. Can you get us all this data? And he had his team actually work on it for two days and get us all that data. We put together, over the last two months, a pretty comprehensive uh, package, sent it back to our stormwater friends, and I was notified last Friday at 11.30, the package was complete, and we sent it up to FEMA. Now, this is a big thing because these guys have a very good record. They do not send a package to FEMA unless it's complete, unless they feel really secure about it. And they've told me they've only had one come back, and they've done, I don't know, probably thousands of them. So they're very good, very detail-oriented. They know what to do. And uh, at 11.30 last Friday, they sent it up. Now, I really didn't want to say anything because, like, with this, this letter, we've had so many times we've got these five, got our hopes up for these grants and didn't get anything. So the grants are supposed to be announced early January and uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that actually this grant comes through. Um, again, I'm told that the funding is there and this is coming from, through the governor's office, this request, and uh, there's a very, very good possibility that we will, will get funded. This is 100% grant, $1.8 million. And also, what we did is we included in it um, the stormwater system where it's going to come down, um, and I believe it's fourth, first to fourth road, something like that. It's going to come down to the stormwater system, and it's going to go into a four bay, whatever they call these, these areas where they collect all the stormwater, and it's going to be filtered. But it was not doing the stormwater, when there's no stormwater flowing, we're going to see if we can make it fit so it can actually take lake water and filter that. It's if there's no stormwater flowing, which was uh, Stephen Gruber's idea from Renew, which we thought that was a very good idea. This won't take care of the lily pads. Uh, it will take care of the stormwater. The fil filter of the stormwater goes into the lake. It'll help hopefully filter some of the stormwater from the lake. We're going to repair the dam and do some work on the spillway. Uh, and this won't solve the lake problem, but it's $1.8 million that we feel very, very hopeful that we're going to get uh, probably uh, sometime be announced in, in the month of January. And uh, this is the first step. So we've always said if we can get a grant and we can do something about this um, and we can do the work and it's going to show the government that, hey, they got the grant, they did it, 
and this is the first step. But I got to tell you, I think uh, if we can get this grant, like I said, it's, well, actually it's now it's $1.9 million because we asked to put in the filtration for the lake water itself. So we've been working very, very hard, worked on it right up till actually we were still getting requests uh, to working on the design up till four o'clock yesterday afternoon um, for our local people. But uh, this is a very, very positive thing. I just want to let everybody know we're keeping our fingers crossed. And if we get this announcement in January and we get this grant, what we need to do is complicated. We need to secure short term funding. And Tom, we're going to tonight. I'm going to have. I'm going to ask the board to authorize uh, circulation for lead agency, which is part of State Environmental Quality Review Act, um, which is required for get the short-term funding. So if we get the grant, we don't have to wait for the grant funding to come. We can start with the short-term funding, which is guaranteed by the grant. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next few weeks. So tonight, I'm going to ask the board for authorization from the floor to circulate for lead agency. And Tom, what is lead agency? If you could just explain to the sure. public what lead agency means. Well, for the project itself, as well as the funding, uh, we have to comply with the Environmental Quality Review Act. And the first step is when there are several agencies that have approval authority, such as the town board, the Army Corps of Engineers, and DEC, uh, the town board would send a notice to say if the others don't object, then after 30 days, the town board would be the, if you will, the coordinator of the environmental review process. So yeah. this, this is a necessary step in order to keep the timetable if the grant is awarded. If the grant is awarded, we, we, we can act, and if we can access the short-term funding, the deadline is to, to make this application for short-term funding is, I believe, March 2nd. So we have to move quickly. There's a 30-day time period. So uh, we're very excited about this grant. and. Uh, I don't know. We've never seen one make it. This is to the final round. And the people that have put it together have assured me that this is a very solid application. And uh, I said they have a very good batting record. So we're very excited about this, and we'll see how it goes. That also, I think everybody's read the newspapers about the EPA, the water main, the EPA is working on getting the funding for that. So uh, Congressman Maloney's office is very involved in that also. So hopefully we'll see some good things happening. So I just want to let everybody know about that. And I think that that is it under announcements tonight. Um, I did want to say next year, I do want to redo our website. We were talking previously about getting some of our town organizations would like to post on our website. And I want to get our website redone. So we're going to talk about how we can go about doing that and having a page just for community organizations that would like to be listed on the website. So that's all I have to announce tonight. Uh, Clerk Hooray, would you call the roll, please? Councilperson Cassidy. Present. Councilperson D'Alessandro. Present. Councilperson Franco. Present. Councilperson Marinaro. Present. Supervisor Hickman. Present. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, we have uh, next on the agenda is to approve the minutes of uh, the October 23rd and 30th, November 6th, and November 20th meetings. Wow, what are we doing with all these things backing up like this? Well, Carol hasn't got the stuff. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. All right. Uh, Clerk Array, have you received any amendments, any modifications, or comments on these minutes as No, I have submitted? not. Do I have a motion to approve all those minutes as submitted? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, under receipt and file, I have two items under receipt and file. Um, they are, we had a couple of requests into New York State Department of Transportation. One of them was implementation, implementation of, uh, oh, I'll do the first. first one's regarding speed limit reduction along Route 82 up from Creamery Road up to the Parkway. Uh, a woman called and she said she's a resident. She's very, very concerned about speed up there. Speed limit up there is 55. Uh, so we sent a, we passed a resolution and asked DOT to take a look at that. Uh, DOT responded, uh, did all these studies. Uh, speed data was collected, three year accident history. And the bottom line is, they said, we regret, regret we cannot lower the existing speed limit. They do not feel it's warranted in this, in this instance. So uh, that's our, one of our receipt and files. And then the other receipt and file was in regards to, um, we wanted to restrict Jake brake use uh, in the Hamlet. And we sent up a letter along with the other one. And they, um, actually, this is a rather lengthy one, but it, the bottom line was no. They said they're not going to restrict break, Jake breaks in, in the town of East Fish, uh, down in the Hamlet. So uh, they gave several reasons why they wouldn't. So, uh, so far, that's how that stands. 
but that will be received. That's received file for, uh, for a res response from DOT. All right. That being said, public comments on agenda items on uh, public agenda items only. Is there anybody in the audience like to speak on any items on the agenda? Okay. There being none. Move to resolutions. The first resolution I would like to make would be authorization to the to the town board to circulate uh, for lead agency uh, for the Hillside Lake stormwater and dam repair dam repair project. I guess that's how I have to have sum it up. Do I have a motion to authorize circulation for lead agency? So, so do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. I can't tell you, wow, this is really, has very good potential. Um, now the first official item on the agenda, set the 2015 town board meeting dates, uh, whereas the town board is determined to review and schedule meetings in 2015. This is typically what we do ahead of time. Uh, so regular schedule meetings, conduct our monthly workshop, and regular meetings per attached schedule. We have an attached schedule. Also, I would like to move a meeting, the beginning of the meeting times to 7 o'clock. The zoning board's always met at 7 o'clock. Uh, a few months ago, the planning board moved to start at 7 o'clock. I thought it would be good if all the, all the legislative boards would meet at 7 o'clock. Uh, does anybody have a problem with the meeting at 7 o'clock? I think it actually gives a little extra time in the evening. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have to wait so late. So. Mm -hmm. You want to start sooner? <laughs> All right. Do I have a motion to set the 2015 town board meeting dates as submitted? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 John. Um, yes, me. Councilman Rare now. Um, I would like, if it's possible, I know that in November we schedule one meeting, and that's uh, budgeting uh, a month. I, I had requested if we could have another meeting to discuss the budget if there is any discussion since <coughs> we really the board, as a board don't have a discussion among ourselves uh, as a group. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would like to see if it's possible to put a second meeting for the month of November. I know that this month, uh, last month, even though we scheduled for one, we ended up having more than one. But It does happen on occasion. Um, I have no problem with that. We could also discuss the uh, the budget at the October workshop. Then you guys, you, the town board, only have it for four or five days by that time. So I have no problem if you want to schedule another meeting for November, or we can just do it uh, at one of the other meetings. Do what is this? The fifth? So we'd have to do the fifth and the twelfth. Two weeks in a row, yeah. Yeah, we'd have to do two weeks in a row. Well, just by the you know, I, I personally think it's very important for the discussion, as I said. Oh, to have an exchange of ideas uh, as far as the budget is concerned. Uh, so whatever t dates, it, they work fine with me. I mean, well, I, I think it's necessary. I have no problem that. We can schedule it tonight. We can schedule it during the year. It doesn't matter if you want to schedule another meeting for, it would have to be November 12th, I would imagine. But when do we have to appoint well, you have the budget a public like? hearing on by November 5th, which yeah. is the first Thursday oh, that's after right. so election. So actually the public hearing And you have to adopt it by the 20th of November. So, so we would actually have to have a discussion workshop meeting before in October. The 5th, yeah. So the only thing October. that we could do in that case would be, mm, yep, because the, the board gets the budget exactly. October 3rd or 4th in that time frame. And uh, the public hearing has to be when, Tom? Yeah, the November 5th is the day you have to open the public hearing. Yeah, so it's going to be, so that should be done. Mm. So then the 15th, no, October? Well, isn't it possible for that? We can see if we that, can make it for the 15th in October. That would give everybody a week and a half to review it. Tom, Tom, is it possible to have at that meeting a discussion of the budget and at the same time have an open meeting? Well, have yeah, I mean. Public, it's the public hearing. So you yeah. have to, you could do it earlier in the day. Second or session the of the meeting could be on a. After the discussion. Well, I don't want. I wouldn't want to. I mean, if we're going to have a talk about it, I'd rather we had a talk about it. I mean, that could be a rather long meeting if we'd have a talk about it. We got to a big talk about it and then have the public hearing. Why don't we see if we could schedule? Um, what about the following week? Have the public hearing the following week rather than the fifth. Like have it the following week. By law. By law. The public hearing has to start on November fifth. 
That's the first Thursday after Election Day, which is what the law says. You have to start. That's and you have to adopt it by November 20th. The state calendar. And if you want to have any meaningful discussion, so I would just figure uh, October, we could, why don't we, we could look at moving the workshop a week later. That would give everybody an extra week to take a look at the budget and discuss it maybe. And then have those two meetings in October in a row. We could do that. That'd be okay. okay. And then we have the well, budget, the workshop will be a budget workshop. Yeah, budget workshop, October 15th. October 15th. Thank you, so we're moving, we're moving the October 5th to the 15th? October 8th to the 15th. To the 15th, mm -hmm. okay. That way we can have a discussion on the budget. Okay. All right, any other changes to the schedule as proposed? No. Thank you. No. Yep. Yeah. All right, there being none, I think we had a motion a second, yes. did we, Carol? Yes, we did. All those favor say aye. 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 Right. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, uh, second resolution. Councilman Marinero, would you read the second resolution? Request uh, New York State Department of Transportation to lower the speed limit uh, in Elside Lake. Whereas in, in the recent weeks, uh, citizens of Elside Lake have advised the town supervisor uh, of their concern with respect to the speed limit with the, uh, within the community. And the request is to lower the speed limit to 25 miles an hour. And these roads are under the control and jurisdiction of New York State Department of Transportation. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board does hereby request the New York State DOT for, uh, to review the, uh, the speed limits established uh, by them throughout the Elside Lake community and be further resolved that the supervisor is authorized to forward said request to the New York State Department of Transportation. Thank you, Councilman. We did send out mailers to Hillside Lake community. 415 cards sent, uh, cards received were only 190, uh, but they all seem to lead the uh, 25 mile an hour, the reduction to 25 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour uh, seemed to be the most, uh, everybody's most in favor of that one. So with that, do I have a motion to uh, request New York State Department of, the, uh, Department of Transportation lower speed limit in Hillside Lake to 25 miles an hour? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, and let me just say, I guess, Tom, can I say 225 specific or just ask for the authorization to lower it less than 30? You have to ask his, his commissioner's permission for you to be able to reduce it less than 30. Less than 30. So I'll amend the, the, the uh, resolution to that. But if everybody's okay, uh, we'll request from DOT to uh, authorize that we could reduce the speed limit less than 30. So uh, do we have a motion? Councilman Marinero, so a motion. Yeah. We have a second. Yeah. If all those are say, favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Councilman Franco, would you read um, resolution number three? Sure. Whereas the town board has previously established an adoptive use playground known as Julie Jungle at the Lime Kiln Recreational Site, and whereas the town has received a $100,000 grant for equipment as well as other contributions from a fundraising committee. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town clerk is authorized to advertise for and receive bids for the purchase and installation of playground equipment phase one and set forth in the specifications prepared by the town engineer. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, may we have attached to our uh, resolution a, a portion of the uh, bids that are supposed to, that will be submitted this for phase one. I do believe that the Julie's Jungle Group has raised a little over $100,000 themselves, and congratulations to Julie's Jungle for doing that work. This is a terrific project. Um, I know we're looking at possibly phase one, and we haven't seen the bids yet, so we really won't know, but they, should, they would be in the neighborhood of approximately $300,000. We have a $100,000 community development block, grant, uh, development block grant from Dutchess County that was awarded last year, and also we have matching funds from the rec development so I believe that we do have enough money to uh, put out this bid. And uh, with that being said, do I have motion to authorize advertising for, Vis for Julie Shungle playground equipment and installation? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carried. Thank you very much, and we look forward. I do believe that next year um, we get the equipment going in, we finish up the site work, and Julie's Jungle will be a happening thing. They raised 310000 something. Uh, three, but that, that includes the grants right, also, right. but that is that is very good. And, yeah. and we made another grant application for the Community Development Block Grant for, for this year. Yeah. So this is a terrific project, and uh, yeah, I give them so much credit. Um, number four, authorized hiring of a part-time parks maintenance worker, whereas the Recreation Department needs to fill a vacant groundskeeper position. We just, one of the gentlemen just retired uh, last week. The acting building ground supervisor had con has conducted interviews and recommends Anthony Monaco for the position. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board does hereby appoint Anthony Monaco as permanent part-time groundskeeper, and his pay will be seventeen thirty to an hour. Uh, actually, Tony has worked for us as a seasonal worker, and we found him to be very reliable. He knows the job, and uh, he was one of, one of about seven interviewees, but he, he did very well. And I, I do, do believe we have a memo from our acting ground uh, supervisor, uh, grounds and uh, buildings and ground supervisor. So, uh, do I have a motion to appoint Tony Monaco? Uh, part, permanent part-time groundskeeper. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those pray say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Peter, would you read uh, this next resolution? Sure. Whereas Everett Lee was previously hired by the town as a laborer in the highway department, and whereas the highway superintendent has indicated his desire to have said employee upgraded to labor, to motor and equipment operator, at an hourly rate of 2016, and whereas the town board does a, concur with the recommendation, now therefore be resolved that Everett Lee be and hereby is promoted to the MEO effective December 12, 2014. Thank you, Peter. Um, I spoke to the highway superintendent. The highway superintendent sent along a short memo asking us uh, to move Everett. Ever E. Lee from the to the position for MEO from a labor start as labor in the highway department. Um, Everett's got his truck driver's license. Dennis has a truck and a route for him. So um, he's anxious to get started. So uh, do I have a motion to upgrade, uh, to upgrade this labor, labor to a motor equipment operator? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Let's see. Resolution number six. Councilman D'Alessandro, would you read this uh, resolution, please? Yeah. Setting a public hearing to amend zoning ordinance, whereas the town board has determined that it is appropriate to consider modifications to the workforce housing provisions of the town zoning law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town clerk will advertise a public hearing to be held on January 26th, I'm sorry, sorry January 22nd, 2014 at 7.30 p.m. We'll make that 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at the regular town board meeting. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah. And uh, the zoning ordinance that needs amending is uh, an issue that we'll have to discuss. Uh, Tom, would you explain a little bit about sure. the zoning Sure. Well, basically, um, everyone's aware of the what we've gone through in this process this year, and there are certain proposed amendments to the local law, uh, to the current local law. It would be to reduce the density per acre, lessen the number of units per acre. It would also be to recognize the regional study, which would put a cap or a limit on the number of any units to be considered. It would also um, modify the public hearing process so that the people don't have to come out two times, three times. It would be um, simplified in that respect. So this would be uh, to fulfilling several of the obligations of making our zoning ordinance overall compliant with state law. And it would also, um, hopefully by then, we'd be able to start the process in reviewing uh, the uh, proposal for across the street. Okay. Uh, this would bring us into compliance with set, uh, federal and state law, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which really was the issue of the several lawsuits that have been stayed. Well, it was one of many, yeah. Right. And it stayed, and they are still pending, correct? The lawsuits correct. have not been... Well, we have a stipulation that if certain things happen in that uh, time period, then the lawsuits will be stipulated discontinued. Okay. And if we pass these zoning laws, so we'll never it's put all us part of the in the sort of position it, correct. again also. And we're also going to increase the minimum lot size, so that would be... Less density. Right. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and we will have a copy of that. That, that would, uh, the planners are going through their part of it, and it should be on everyone's desk in the next week or so and available to the public. Yeah, so we can discuss that at the January workshop, and then the uh, they will hold the public hearing at the January meeting. Tom, you mentioned uh, timing for the lawsuit. What what is the timing actually? Uh, the, well, the law, the stipulation with respect to the process is. Between now and March 1st, we have to um, consider amendments to the zoning ordinance. Uh, a second phase would be the assisted living part. That's not part of this public hearing. That will probably be in February. Uh, with respect to the site specific across the street, that would be the process we continue from now through June 1st. Um, and we're anticipating that a site plan will be submitted probably uh, in sometime in January and then that will be on for discussion with the planning board at several meetings and then advance into the public hearing process. So those are the two timetables, March 1st for us to consider the zoning amendments and June 1st to consider uh, the, the project. project approval. Thank you. Do I have a motion to set the public hearing to amend the zoning ordinance? So moved. I have second. Second. All those prayers say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, number seven is to authorize rebid for plowing, sanding, and salting sidewalks. Whereas there was no bid on the initial highway bid for the plowing, sanding, and salting of sidewalks, the highway superintendent has requested the sidewalk bid go out for rebid and therefore be resolved that town clerk be and hereby is authorized to advertise for sidewalk bid. May it be further, resol further resolved that following the advertisement receipt of bids, the summary of the bids received shall be filed with the town board for further consideration and award. Uh, do I have a motion to authorize to rebid for plowing, sanding, and salting of sidewalks? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, and we do have one from the floor. I think Mark Kelly brought to my attention that nearest state controller, we have to authorize filing of certain standard workday uh, criteria with nearest state controller. So yeah, it's like just a simple housekeeping. It's a housekeeping issue for um, participants in the pension plan that don't have a um, regular time schedule. Yeah. So we use an approximation based on the based on the table. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to uh, authorize filing of standard workday documents with uh, nearest state controller? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right. That's it for the resolutions tonight. Uh, next, next item on the agenda is take public comments on general town issues. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on any general town issues? It's slow shower. Good evening, everybody, and happy holidays to everyone and your family. Um, John, you and um, had attended, uh, I think it was uh, two, two board meetings ago at the uh, Wappinger Central School District uh, with Scott. I do want to thank both of you again for showing up for that evening. Um, well, we had a reason to be there. <laughs> well, we didn't that, just wander in. No, I understand. Well, that just leads to my to my just follow up question. Uh, I know that you had done a presentation with regards to request for an easement uh, down by John Jay. Uh, on the last school board meeting, they had nothing on the agenda. I do remember that they uh, were promising an answer to you, hopefully uh, by their December meeting. Um, Monday, they do have another meeting. I have not seen the agenda yet, so I don't know if that's an item on there. But I was just curious if you had any communication oh, yeah. with regards to them and oh, whether yeah. or not that would be up for discussion Well, well that's on up Monday. to them. That's up to them when okay. they schedule. We've had discussions with them. Okay. Right um, if you just want, because could you just kind of explain again exactly what the offer was from the town to the school board and what, what you're trying to do with the request for the easement? Oh, sure. Uh, we're proposing what we're looking at doing is we uh, like to redevelop the Route 52 corridor for commercial. Uh, we have the old IBM West complex with Sports Dome has been uh, actually approved to be built there. And we have several businesses along the Route 52 corridor. Our thought is that if you bring down sewer and water, that would really help redevelopment process, especially when it comes to the Sports Dome. 
So we're looking at three different options, bringing the sewer all the way up here. Um, also, we're looking, talking with IBM uh, about possibly using their sewer plant. They have a six million gallon a day plant, and right now they only use about, I think, three, two, three million gallons a day. So they have excess capacity there. And John Jay has a small little plant of their own that I think is good for 20,000 gallons a day, uh, of which they think they only use eight or 10,000 gallons a day. So it's the different proposals are we'd like to ultimately we will look at coming up here or possibly going to IBM because that just makes the most sense. But okay. um, in the interim, we would propose to John Jay that if we could partner in the operation of their plan and we could use some of their excess capacity, that um, it would benefit the corridor, the dome project. We would help cut the cost because we would help you know, with the operations there. And the school board seemed to be very interested in cutting the cost. Also, in the long term, when we form our, our, our sewer district, we would have, obviously, the West Complex, the Dome, uh, the other businesses on Route 52 that would like to be in the sewer district, and then also we would have the school, because as we know with the school, their sewer plant's getting a little bit old, will right. need work. It just makes a lot of sense to have them included in our sewer right. district. And obviously, it would save, it would save so, them a little bit of So of, as far as money. that's one part of it, and the other thing is, uh, with the amount of utilities that run down Route 52, and I believe there's electric lines, uh, there's our water main, runs right down 52. There's a lot of utilities in that corridor. It would really benefit us if we could go off through IBM's property. We would make, uh, make an appropriate uh, area through the property to run our, water, our sewer main or utility, utility main uh, without disrupting the school or the parking lot or what have you. And they, they were very interested in working with us, which is something as I said, I've said to uh, the principal, John J. Dwight Bonk, you know, and to the, the, uh, the superintendent of Wapner Central School, we need to all work together. And they all agree. So uh, we had a, I think we had a good talk that night, and uh, we've continued our conversation. Actually, Mr. Bach just was promoted to assistant superintendent, so there'll be a new principal at John Jay for you to work with as well. Not sure who that is as of yet. Um, obviously, there'll be a savings for the, for the school district. Is there any additional cost to the town uh, with this offer, a short term or long term? Well, whenever you form a district, it's not a cost to the town, it's a cost to the people, to the, the people that benefit Using in the it. district. Okay. And the whole concept is the more people you can get to a district, the lower it costs. Obviously, for right. You're, overall. right. So you're, our you're thought minimizing is, everyone's costs. Absolutely. And it, we, we knowing the school, the sewer plant school is okay now, but it will need work. And why would we leave them out there? We could bring them in and lower, bring them in and lower costs for everybody in the district to okay. be paid for by the people in the district. Okay, so whether the sports dome is built or not built, for whatever reason, obviously this is still something that you want to move forward with, obviously oh, for absolutely. the development of the business. Absolutely. Okay, so it's just, it's just not specific just to the dome project. No, but it's the dome does have, the dome, in my opinion, the dome is a very big contributor to the whole redevelopment of that corridor. Right. And they do have their approvals. So I, so I think that's a project that will help. Uh, I, and I think you can already see progress down on the Route 52 corridor. The old gas station is down. Yeah, I, the old I, restaurant is down. So uh, right. I just want to make sure because at your presentation, obviously you were, you know, uh, emphasizing the dome project as you know uh, something I'm, very important, and that. I think it's a catalyst. But that's well, my, that's my um, opinion. well, I'm just saying. I just didn't want it to seem like if for whatever reason if the dome doesn't get built, that you know, this offer or this arrangement would be off the table. Obviously, yeah. that's not the case, so that's a good thing. Okay. Well, also, I'd like to add that several meetings that the supervisor and I had with the Dutchess County Economic Development Corporation, they made it very clear that there were some prospects that shied away from going down the 52 corridor because we didn't have sewer and water. So, very good, very you know. good. Right, good. Thank and, you. And, you know, we just changed all of our laws for that area, so whatever comes in, be it the dome or not, you know, whatever Linau is going to do with the, uh, with the Old West Complex also is very critical to us. Okay. Well, that seems, that seems very positive. Um, just to step back with regards to Kearney and the project, I, I reviewed um, the, uh, on the video uh, replay of the meeting when the announcement was made that the special permit was denied. And a few things that stood out when I watched it again. Uh, you had mentioned that he had no agreement with the town for water and sewer, no agreement with any of the homeowners in the area for easements, no true agreement with DOT with regards to traffic. Obviously, uh, he didn't have any agreement or really any real conversations with the school district. Um, and Tom just brought up an interesting uh, 
point here is, is the main, because I, I was just trying to look at that and thinking, well, you know, he, he filed a suit and he didn't have anything, in my opinion, kind of his ducks in a row here. And what would really have been his position of, you know, filing a suit that other than that the fact that, I'm saying, other than the fact that we denied it, mm -hmm. but obviously Tom, you know, mentioned, and I'm assuming one of the other main reasons was we were out of compliance with federal and state law, which was one of their reasons why uh, he went ahead to file the file well, suit. I was just going to say the suit was not about just denial. those. Although there okay. was an Article 78 which, which would state that they, they charged the town board with making a decision that was uh, not, not, not correct. That was an Article 78 which would have right. been filed against us, but it had to do with our zoning laws. And well, I'm just saying, just the way the way exclusionary you know, we, zoning, right. not compliance with FHA, state zone, and state uh, regulations. Right. So there were other things involved because it's just with, when we the town we were all discussing this, um, you know, and he was making his presentations. You know, it made it seem like the fact that when all the information came out, he really didn't have, as I said, his ducks in a row. And I was trying to think, what was his reasonings for doing this? Because if he didn't do his due diligence, didn't do his work, had no true agreement with water and sewer with the town and a lot of other things, what was his reasoning for filing a lawsuit? I mean, you know, to think that, okay, I'm just going to come here and build this project and, well, you know, the town didn't said no, uh, and then I'm going to file a lawsuit. I mean, I was just trying to... If I may, to, if I I may try, just point something out yeah. to you is normally a project can be proved subject to many of those things. So Abs obviously... In drawing a resolution Absolutely. of denial, you try to put in everything that possibly could be an issue with the project. But normally, if a project was going to go forward, it's subject to health department approval for sewer or septic and things like that. So those issues could have been, if the project was approved, conditions of approval. Absolutely. It's just when he came in front of the community and the board and the planning board and went through his presentation, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't express any of these things. Mm -hmm. So, again, just re-watching, watching everything over again, just trying to understand his position for, for doing well, what he did. Earlier in the project for water, they, they had discussions with Dutchess County because the county okay. water line is right there. And since they would be considered a single user, the county water authority would sell them water. So that's a possible water supply that he could have had. That wasn't I'm just saying he out. didn't, <laughs> it, it wasn't conveyed yeah. to us. I mean, you know, and as I said, it, it, as, as, as the community spoke and everyone spoke, it's not like we didn't want him here. You know, we, I feel that the community still wants this project. It's just, as we said, it wasn't in the right location. And I was just trying to figure out, like, did he, why did he think that this project was going to be approved hmm. without any of well, the issues that hmm. the community that, and everyone brought up? That's hmm. a question for the developer. Well, obviously. My whole point is, as I said at the last meeting, you know, moving forward across the street is a positive. And I just don't want there to be that, you know, premise or that feeling that we have to go through this same process again if that, that's what his feelings are or we're going to run into these same problems. I'm assuming that's not the case uh, with across the street. But I was just trying to figure out why he was doing what he was doing and the reasons why, whether he just assumed that, you know, I'm going to bring this project in here and I could just build this without having any of these things done. Obviously, they can always be, um, you know, subject to, but he never presented it that way. He made it sound like all these things were already, okay, resolved or close to being resolved, and he was just waiting on us to okay this project. So, I mean, that's the past is the past. Again, it's, po you know, we're moving across, we're moving forward. It's positive. I think it's, you know, it, it, it's a good project. Um, I was just curious. Uh, just for that, and obviously, thank you for clarifying that with regards to being out of compliance is one of his main reasons for, uh, for bringing suit, and as I said, hopefully we can work this all out. So happy holidays again to everybody, and I appreciate the few minutes. Thank you. John, uh, quick, um, quick point. Um, I know that you, you had discussion with the schools. What would the cost reduction in them Tying up if, into if the we sewer system, well, we because to, hmm? just quick, we are the taxpayers that we pay their bills right. as far as the school. Right. So, did you actually discuss numbers with them, or? Oh, absolutely. We're you know right now it's in a conceptual stage, so you try to assign numbers, benefit units to each unit, each building, what they're going to be 
talk what they're going to be using? Oh, absolutely. John Jay, I'm, I'm talking John Jay about. John Jay is one of them. Just, yeah, right. But you have to look at them all. So when we look at forming a sewer district, we have to look at what the cost of the district is going to be. Then you spread it over. Everybody's going to be using it. And then you have to actually look at each individual and say, okay, how much will they be using? So it's a rough calculation right now. We're trying to figure out who's going to be going in. I think as some of the members of the school board uh, felt that if they didn't have to put money into their sewer system and we could lower the bill, they were in favor of it. What the actual numbers will be won't be known until we finish our map plan report and you know get everybody in the district and know what their what their proposed uses are going to be. Because the school boards are known to spend our money real well, so you know <laughs> I have my concerns about those guys when we're well, talking about savings money. So we, we will know when the time comes what, what this, they're going to be saving, right? Oh, yeah. We we're, we're not looking to increase their, their fees. We're looking to yeah. save them money. And uh, they were very, very, very appreciative of that. So We Thank could you. sublet Mark over to him one day a week. <laughs> you could. <laughs> so. Anybody else in the audience like to speak on any general town issues? I just have a couple of questions, and I'm just curious. Um, when the project was moved to the Cannon property, it increased by 20 units. Why was that? They requested an increase. They had more acreage over there, so they, increased, they, they requested an increase. Okay, and has the town agreed on a price that they are selling the developer yes, we have. land for? Okay. Will that be made public knowledge? And yeah, what, was it the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I missed that. What was $17,000 a unit without approvals. Which comes to one million four ninety five, one point four million, something like that, give or take. Okay. Plus a buy-in fee for water and sewer, and a rec fee of about another hundred and uh, excuse me, another five hundred and fifty thousand of uh, fees to those three funds. Okay. So it's a little over two million dollars. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sure. Anybody in the audience like to speak on any uh, non-agenda items? Hi, my name is Ben Adeletta. Um, I live in Dogwood Knowles. Uh, currently, I own 34 Miller Drive, and the town has sent me, I actually received from oh. the engineer, um, a request for a variance for a second well they want to build. Oh, oh yes, oh, yes, man. yes. Scott, would you explain that a little bit? This is one of the homeowners. We, we're, drill, try, we're drilling another well yes, out there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know the existing wells in Dogwood. Speak to the microphone. Existing wells in Dogwood were drilled back in, in uh, I guess, late 60s, 60s early 70s. 70s and yeah. Back then, they had different you know, requirements for protection. We only needed to have you know 100 foot of protection. So now, you know, fast forward to today's requirements. Uh, Board of Health requiring 200 feet of, of wellhead protection. Um, the third well that we're adding at, at uh, Dogwood. Is, is necessary because we're work we're running the two existing wells like together at the same time we have no redundancy so if one well goes down we can't provide enough water from just the remaining wells so Board of Health today's standards say you got to have enough um, capacity with one well out of service to meet the demand so that's why we're drilling so we need another well basically right. is what we're doing so there's a lot of there's iron and manganese in those wells and back in the day they produced about 300 gallons a minute 400 gallons a minute but now they're down to like 125 150 because the screens cake up you know with the iron and manganese we have the filtration system that we put in you know when we purchase so we, we're adding the third well and again today's standards require 200 feet of separation uh, not ownership, but but protective easement. So the three homeowners were contacted that are within that 200-foot radius. Uh, provided them a, a survey map. Uh, two of the three people have already agreed to, and the third person, I'm not sure but which one you are, wanted, <laughs> I wanted, to, see, before, I mean, wanted I, to see the survey stakes yeah, before yeah. they made their final. They weren't opposed to it. They just wanted to see what the impact was going to yeah. be. Well. First of all, just starting from the beginning, thank you so much for buying that well. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Thank you so much. I mean, since, you, since the town took the well over, it's been beautiful. It's a lot better. No more manganese with the filtration yeah. system. It's, I have the house first off the well. Oh, wow. And I actually live on driveway. 69 Wright Boulevard, but I own 34 and I rent it out. Right. But that house used to get just absolutely Caked demolished yeah, you know? yeah but thanks to the new filtration okay. system and the town taking over i mean it's phenomenal now water okay. pressure everything is great um my only concern was i just had a this is great and and i, I again my hats off to everybody yeah. my only concern was just or just a, a, a question 
Based upon what I received in the mail on the plot plan, the three houses that you were mentioning that did get letters mm -hmm. asking for variance, their septics are in the front. This septic is in the back, well away from the easement area. There won't ever be a problem with me having the septic in the back of the house. I never change it. It's always yeah. been that way. It's, I, no, and that was part of the review process because that was identified, and then the state health department took a look at that. Okay. And, and they're fine with the, the septic okay. at that location. And, uh, but the they, what they don't want to see, not that it would ever happen, is people bring an automotive repair garage oh, no. <laughs> or stockpile drums okay. of oil or manure, for that matter. There's a lot of restrictions. And even though mo primarily it's wetland, we really don't see anybody doing anything back there. Right. They still want to have this easement in place sure. to protect it. Um, now, again, when you had mentioned, well, you mentioned you want to put another well. Is it another big storage tower barrel? Or Below the ground. Just, a, just in the ground. Yeah. So there's no more buildings going off no. or nothing? The only reason why I say is only in the wintertime, obviously, because it's right there. You can't help but to it. notice it yeah. in the back. But. I was just curious if another storage tower was going yeah, up. No, I don't or think we're doing there. another tank. We're just drilling the well and tying it into our system. Well. So, I mean, you don't know now is of any fencing that's going to go across to any easement Everything areas falls there? within the existing fence. Beautiful. That's, what, that's all I wanted to it's know. It's just the area of, of protection. My, my property is only affected in the far corner. Okay. Um, the people next to me is a more significant area. But like I said, this is great, and, and great. thank you so much. Everything has been great. Well, thank you very much. I we appreciate, appreciate that. that. Thank you. And you just made Scott's job a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Any other public comments on general town issues? All right. There being none, uh, next item on the agenda is budget transfers. The controller has supplied us with a list of budget transfers uh, for the end of the year meeting. And uh, if everybody's had a chance to look at them, I know the first, the first section under general fund is really uh, to reimburse the town for grants that we've gotten for various police grants. Um, and Mark, would you just give a little, little uh, summary on these, on these? Sure. So the first page, as Supervisor Hickman said, is um, for the general fund, we have um, monies that we've received. That don't be that technical. Just this is this is for the, we're getting that we had budgeted for, for and now okay. we're just um, <laughs> you know I don't want you going the appropriations through the line, or accordingly. <laughs> and the second page is simply moving money around. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't need to insult the controller. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Um, no, I did want to say though the second line is is just to reimburse uh, programs for the senior programs. It's recognizing hiring uh, revenues that we've yeah. already received and corresponding higher expenditures for trips and stuff that they have funded the seniors themselves. Yeah. So. Okay. And then on the second page, the highway is really uh, storm-related, winter-related, Mark? It's uh, four lines being increased, all related to winter expenses, being funded by five other lines from highway but it's no overall increase no in the, in the highway it's, just... it's no increase in the budget it's simply moving money from one line to another line. okay anybody have any questions on any, any of the budget transfers yes um our police grants we used to they used to be um put forward by our state assemblyman or state senator who does that now our police i'm the question. the state the police grants I don't think we get any more money from New York State. We don't get any. Assemblyman Molinaro and Senator Sland used to provide us with grants. I know they did um, yeah. bulletproof vest grants, all kinds of grants. But I, we, they know that was it. Our, our present uh, no more people don't do that. So, uh, just asking, since the police chief is here, do we apply ourselves now for anything? Um, I made phone calls to. Uh, Time to time, we'll reach out to them. We just keep trying. And keep trying. Okay, just asking. But these are done through Dutchess County, Dutchess County DWI, seatbelt, a um, right. couple others. Yeah, mostly covers overtime. But the I'm just saying, the most, uh, the more we can get, the oh, better. No. <laughs> okay. Thank Anybody you. have any other questions on the budget transfers? Do I have a motion to accept the budget transfers as submitted? So moved. 
Do I have a second? Second. All second. those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, next town board meeting will, uh, January 8th will be the workshop which will discuss the new zoning, change to the zoning ordinance, and then our reorganization regular meeting will be January 22nd. Uh, this is our last, actually this is our last meeting of the year. I'd like to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, Happy Kwanzaa, however you, you, you celebrate this season. Have a merry, happy holiday and a happy new year and a safe one. And to the board, anything you'd like to say? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. All right. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Someone. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Meeting is now closed.